Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, y'all. Call me like a cherry pony. Call me like a cherry pony. Your boy done switched up on you. Call me like a cherry pony. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, y'all. You guys, look, if this is your very first time to this channel, run on that subscribe for me. And after you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell. It's right there beside the word subscribe so that you'll be notified each and every time that we upload a video. And then welcome to this great, 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 great family. Now that you're part of it, there's some things that we do. And we do them every single day because they help us grow. Those things are comment, comment, comment like a share and go and put a team. Comment like a share and go and put a team. Come in like a share and don't forget to come in like a share. Come in like a share. Come in like a share. Don't forget to come in like a share. Come in like a share. Come in like a share. Don't forget to don't get to come like a share. Okay, gotta check it out with your pray. We're gonna get to the good ass. Here we go. Hey, man, how y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Happy Sunday over here on the side. The beans in the building, y'all. There go, there go, there go. He is, little Ben, has uh, sign kids zero sugar in him today. Also, if you like your buy your lips hot sauce, look way up in the top of the squish box in blue. Hit that link and right there you can get your lips hot sauce. And your lips merch. Okay, you guys today for the food. Baby, this is what I want. I got some fried chicken eggs, honey, without no skin on them. I got some um, mixed green beans uh, with iced potatoes. Uh huh. And we have got us some canty yams. And that's what we got. That's what we got. That's what we got. That's what we got. Let's get to eating. I'm gonna be eating my chicken with some sriracha today, though, y'all. I got a taste for some sriracha. Uh huh. So we got some green beans and iced potatoes and everything, and some candy yam. It's gonna be the first bite. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm. 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 Yep. Mm. Mm. This has got cut green beans and um, like what they call the French green bean, I think. You know, the one big little string one. Mmm. The French style thing. They both in him. And yep. There y'all. Mmm. 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 So, how y'all doing today? Mmm. I'm telling you, I'm good. Mm -hmm. So how are y'all doing today? How you doing? These chicken legs ain't got no skin on. Well, they got skin on, but they ain't got no um, uh, breeding on them. And that's how I wanted them today. Mm -hmm. You want a bite? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a ratchet taste. I that one is today. Mm hmm. So, y'all, mm. there are several different tropical storm, hurricane things that are going on in the world. Mm hmm. Lee, Hurricane Lee. Mm-hmm. It's up there around <clears throat> a couple days back, I think Saturday, yesterday. And I think I'm not for sure, but if I'm not mistaken, it's already hit landfall and has begun to, you know, do what it's gonna do. Of course it flooded here in Atlanta you know, a few days ago. But anyway, but there's another story in that area, that Massachusetts area, Cape Cod, up there, that I want to talk about today. Mm. Y'all, I pose a question in my head with the
history of the United States of America. Y'all, do y'all ever think racism will ever end? Well, let me say this. In my opinion, racism will end one day in this country. But I don't think, mm, mm, I don't think it'll be in my lifetime. In my child's lifetime. Possibly, they could make some headway in my grandchildren's lifetime, possibly. Um, and it is because of inbreded or generational racism. That's just what it is. Y'all, there's a story um, or there is an incident that happened this past July in Massachusetts where this 14 year old um, Caucasian young man we ain't not gonna say his whole name because baby you know they will block me um they will demonetize my video so we ain't gonna do all that okay we just gonna say drawing the 14 year old white kid named John Mm -hmm. In the Cape Cod, Massachusetts area, which that's one of the more wealthier areas in the United States of America, okay? So, John texted and invited a black kid, which on the news, which we've talked about this before, they say a white kid was up for or is being charged with um, cause I want, I want you to see the symbolism of certain things that even the media does. It says white kid is charged with attempted murder or attempted drowning of black male. <laughs> you might not see the iron, the irony in this, or you might not see the symbolism or the, um, You might not see what I see. But why is a 14-year-old white boy called a kid and a 15-year-old black boy called a male? Y'all, these are just the things that run around in my head. Okay? Anyway, this 14-year-old white kid, John, texts the 15-year-old black kid to come to a pond in this place in Chatham, mm, Massachusetts. The black kid does go. And he's met with this particular child, this particular white kid, and there's two white kids that are there. It is said allegedly that they were throwing rocks at the kid from the beginning. Or whatever. I guess taunting him. Because the black kid didn't know how to swim. And they finally coerced him into the water. And mm, when they do, mm, mm, the black kid, knowing he doesn't know how to swim, puts on a life jacket and goes into the water. You know. At the time, I'm pretty sure if he went into the water on his own, you know, that he didn't sense, other than the fear of the water at the time, he didn't sense a, a level of fear at this time. When he goes into the water, and this white 14-year-old kid, Mm, John. Now, he never told him he can't swim. They know this. John proceeds to try to dunk him underwater several times, four or five times. Now, if you can't swim and you're in water, you're already not at ease anyway. But somebody dunking you underwater, pulling you underwater, 
You're going to pay him. So John proceeds to call the black kid the N-word, you know. And the black kid repeatedly tells him, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And so the other white child proceeds, because he's saying I can't breathe, to call the black kid George Floyd. These are children, 14, 15 years old, you know. It's kind of hard to say that wealth had a lot to do with this particular case because if you're living in Cape Cod, black or white, you know, you got a little piece of change, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, it all boils down to generational white racism. These children are not being taught this by TV. You know what I'm saying? There are some subliminal things, like I just told you about the whole white kid or white child and black male that go on. You have to stay woke by that kind of stuff because it happens. You know? To be honest with you, in my opinion, if it happened the other way around, it would have said, even though he's only 15 years old, it would have said, black man tries drowning or, you know, they would have said black man if it had been nowhere around. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, even though he was only 15 years old, I'm saying this to say, y'all, generational racism is alive and well very much so in the United States of America. And whether your child is black or white or whatever have you, I think it is a responsibility of us as adults to teach our children better. You know? Just because of the fact that your child may be white or maybe um, or a different descent than black, I feel like I feel like that we as adults are kind of um, or, or put it this way, I feel like non-black or non-minority adults that are raising their children that might not necessarily be prejudiced or racist or whatever don't understand the obligation that they have to still teach their children against this type of um, mindset or way of thinking. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, just because of the fact that uh, you don't um, feel this way about other people does not mean that your child doesn't need education about such things. To let certain things go unsaid or to not have an adverse stance on certain things, and a lot of cases can be just as, um, can have just as a detriment on a child as anything else. I think that non-minority adults don't understand that if this is not your way of thinking, that should be an active conversation that you have with your children. It should be. It should not be, well, just because I'm not racist and I haven't taught my child to be racist, we just don't have to talk about these things. That's just as bad as, mm, to me, in my opinion, that is just as bad as being a racist. In my opinion, I'm not saying that that's the view of the world or well, that's the stance that you take on it. But I do know is to not say anything or in avoidance of these type of conversations is just as harmful. Because they're going to get that education in that particular 
um, area somewhere. So, if you don't speak out against it, and they're at their friend's house, and their friend's parents are prisoners, where do you feel like that, that training is going to come from? Where do you feel like that mm, that stance of how they want to be is going to come from? Because children aren't learning racism from the television. They aren't learning racism from social media. They're learning racism at home. Point back and period. Through their environment and the people that are above them, the adults above them, and, and, and the um, attitudes that these adults take towards such things. Mm -mm -mm. The same kid, though, the reason why I'm talking about it now, y'all, because this happened like July 19th or 20th or something like that of this year. But the reason why I'm talking about it now is in following the case, they done let the little white kid out on bail for no money, released to his father to live in this city, Chatham, where his pawn was that they coerced the black child to on a electronic um, monitoring device, you know, like an ankle bracelet. Y'all, if the prosecutor in this area, the district attorney, whatever, if they have charged this little boy with a racially charged attempted murder case, don't get me wrong now. I don't think the end child should be separated from their parents um, in normal circumstances. But if you try to drown another child and you have, are being charged with attempted murder, I don't think that child should be let go. I just don't. I don't think that child should be let go. I don't care what color the child was. I don't care. Attempted murder is a serious charge. And it's not like the child or his attorney are trying to deny that he done it. They're just saying that he wasn't trying to murder the, the, the child. That it was childish mischievousness. So it ain't like that they're saying, well, no, this didn't happen. Y'all, I just wonder how long and how many years in this particular country is racism going to be able to flourish the way it is? You know? I mean... Right after this happened in July, matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, the same exact day that it happened, later on that day, this same white child punched a Asian kid in the face because the Asian kid called him fat. You know what I'm saying? Now, I can see that there being um, chalked up to, you know, childish mischievousness. I, I can get that. But to pull a child down that cannot swim, that has on a life, do you know how much force? And this is a big husky or white kid. Do you know how much force it would take for anybody, a child or a person, to pull someone under the water with a life jacket on? Do you understand how much force that takes? For you to, you would almost have to take something, and I, I can't imagine, but you would almost have to take your hands, put it on someone's shoulder or their head, the, oh, excuse me, the upper part of their body, and use the weight of your body to lift yourself up on that person to up, up, to, to make that person go in the water far enough to where they said the child was ingesting water through his nose and mouth and all this kind of stuff, and the child, every time the child would come up, the child would say, I can't breathe, and he would just do it again.
There are a lot of things in the United States of America that I'm proud to be an American for. There is. But as an American, the history of our country when it comes to racism and slavery and one group thinking they're better than another one, it's quite shameful. It's quite shameful. Oh, excuse me, y'all. It's quite shameful. It is. It is that generational racism, the reason why our children have to be taught at home or have to be chastised and rehearsed over and over again about how you deal with police. About how you conduct yourself um, in public. How you conduct yourself. Well, of course, all uh, parents should, you know, to teach their children how to conduct themselves in public. That's just a thing that you do. But it's not fair. We have to go above and beyond to teach our children how to conduct themselves uh, in a lot of situations um, that may, you know, interact with the police or interact with racism or, you know, there's a lot of things like that. That we have to go through in our culture and our race, being a black African American, whoever you want to call us, um, just don't call us the wrong thing, you know what I mean? But anyway, um, there's just a lot of things that we have to go through with our children to do our best to keep our children safe. And other nationalities just don't have to do them, other cultures just don't have to go through that. I say it's harder for, um, under any circumstances, whether it be two parents, single parent home, or whatever, it's harder raising African American children than it is any other nationality that live in this particular country. You know? Because of mm, the hatred and the bigotry and the racism that has plagued this country for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And it poses myself a question in my head. Will racism ever really end in the United States of America? Will it ever come a time when children won't be able to playfully or maliciously um, say to black children, or mock black children and call them George Floyd. When it comes a time where black children don't have to have a defense mechanism and an anger in them, when they're called the N-word, will there ever come a time when our children don't have to be afraid of being brutalized or killed by the police? Wherever comes time, when we don't have to have special attention brought to our children on how to conduct themselves with the police or with people of authority. Whatever comes time, when we as African American people can walk into uh, stores and not be racially profiled. Whatever come in time where uh, the term banking while black or driving while black doesn't have a meaning. Whatever come in time, you know? I know this. I don't think there's any way possible. Like I said, that the, the situation could have been reversed. Where the black child had done this to a white child. Like I said, in the news. Not all of them, of course. But the news coming out of that particular place. 
is it said that a white child, <laughs> what I saw, the two programs I saw, said white child charged for attempted murder of black male. Even in the reverse, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even in the reverse, the black child, which is only one year older, the white child is 14 and the black child is 15. Neither one of them are legal age to be an adult. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. But even in reverse, the black child is called a black male as opposed to a black child. Why is the United States of America this way? That's why I always say to y'all, stay woke. Do you know how many of um, people, last time I remember when we talked about the whole, um, what was it? Over there in um, Montgomery. A lady told me last time for having my own view of how we as how I was uh, proud of the way that those people stood up um, for that man. That I was spreading hate and I was a racist myself. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I plain see it in my video. I didn't care what color the post was. Anybody jumping on somebody that way. People should have came to his aid, you know? However, if it makes me a racist to come on my platform and make sure that I keep people aware and tell them to stay woke for what's happening in the United States of America to my own people, call me what you want to. Just don't call me the wrong thing. You hear me? All right, now I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go. I am going to go, y'all. I just had to make sure that you guys knew. Because um, I'm sure some people have don't know anything about what I'm talking about. Okay? But it happened over there in Chatham, Massachusetts. The 14-year-old white kid um, is being charged, now has been let out on bail um, over there to his father with an ankle bracelet on, monitoring device on. Um that is being charged with attempted murder of trying to drown a 15-year-old black kid that he coerced there. And the only reason why he stopped, according to what I read, is not because they were through having fun or trying to drown this young man. It stopped because another child that happened to be there swam over to them to help the black kid because the black kid couldn't swim. And that's how the incident was resolved. But yet they don't let him out of bail now. Now, hell, and I'm telling you, if it had been the other way around, y'all, things wouldn't have took the turn the way they did like this. I just don't think that they would have. I just don't. I've seen it time and time and time and time again where 14, 50-year-old uh, young black children, not only are they not, don't receive bail, what they're looking at, they're looked and handled, they're, they're looked at and handled from the judges by, as violent offenders. But they're children. They, they are being charged as adults. But at 14, 15 years old, for this same exact thing, the same exact type thing, where no one is, is, is physically dies, but the act of what they done, they were charged as adults, and da 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 da. Y'all, will racism ever really end in the United States of America? Like I said, I know it won't happen in my time. It may get better, but it definitely, I don't think it'll happen in my child's time either. Maybe my grandchildren, maybe. Maybe my grandchildren, but I definitely know it won't happen in my lifetime because it's too it's too prominent out there still yet today. Um, that's just why you got to stay woke. That's why you got to stay woke. And those of you or us that aren't a part of the black community, the African American community that have children, know that you not speaking up and teaching your child the right way or your own views if you're not prejudiced. Teaching, not teaching them against racism and prejudice is just as bad as being racist or prejudiced. It is. Because you leave your child's uh, imagination or their process of them becoming uh, racist or not racist or a bigot or not bigot or whatever. You leave that up to the environment and they're going to get it from somewhere. 
So if you're not teaching them against racism, if you're not teaching them against these type of things, and they have a best friend down the road, Johnny Joe Jim over yonder, and they parents and grandparents that have taught them racism, your child is going to pick up on that. So you're not uh, helping the world by not being a racist if you're not teaching your children to not be a racist. I don't know whether that's going to sink in or not to a lot of people because some people, they won't. But I hope that you understand that. And I'm going to get up out of here. I love you guys so much. I want you to do. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed. So I'm a newly Jan. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. We truly appreciate each and every one of you for being here because you could have been anywhere else in the world. But you chose to be right here with us and we love you for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like this Lily Jan. Right around we go. Hey, right around we go. I love you guys so, so much. And I'm going to see you guys next time. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, y'all. You guys look. Oh, and remember that there's always more than one way home. All you have to do is get there. So get there, people. Get there. I love you all. And I'm going to see you guys next time. And if you're not going to watch me next time, you have lied to me. And I know you lied. Period. <laughs> bye. Bye. Oh, by the way, <laughs> shout out to, I'm praying for all the people that were in the, um, path of Hurricane Lee and the one that's still out there now. I think it's starting with an M. I don't know what they call this. L M. Yeah, it's going to be an M. It's a tropical storm right now, but I think they said it's going to be a hurricane too. And it's headed toward Bermuda. So all of those that were in the path that were affected by uh, the hurricanes that are out there now, that will be affected, we're affected, all of that kind of stuff. We're praying for you guys and we're going to see you guys later. Go check out what I'm telling you about though. Bye-bye.